Hi, welcome to John Paul Music UK, and in this video, we're going to go over Loopy HD on the iPad. Loopy HD is an app for iOS which is available on both iPhone and iPad and even the iPod Touch and you can use it as a multi-phrase looper for figuring out some loops or even live performance. Today we're going to go over Loopy HD in its entirety, we're going to have a look at the settings, we're going to have a look at the user interface and then I'll make a quick recording to show you how it works. I'm also going to show you some tips and tricks along the way. So straight from the offset, when you launch Loopy HD for the very first time, it actually goes through a tutorial. So you're more than welcome to go through that. And then once you've done that, you'll get this kind of interface. Now I'm using an iPad which can go up to 12 different loops. You can change this. Uh, so what you can do is before we even start looping, let's have a look at the settings. So we tap this little arrow, we get a menu bar and we've got record at the very top. And we've got what looks like a new like folder. And that's actually a new session. We've got sessions, recordings, settings and help. We're going to go into settings. We've got a couple of options here, but the big one is input gain. Now I'm using an audio interface to record this, so I'm not going to have an input gain. My input gain is going to come from the audio interface. You can also put on a little bit of reverb, which is quite nice. Monitoring is switched on, so when enable this, you can hear the live audio input via the headphone and audio output at the same time, which is what you want. And then live input recording, so we can record the microphone as well. We can also do play in background if you are using other apps uh, with Loopy HD. I'll have that turned off just for this session. We've got some other settings we want to go through as well. So in the general settings, the big one is track layout. So this is 12 tracks, but what you can do is you can have it as six tracks, just to show you that. Or we can have nine tracks. But I normally keep it as the maximum so we can have the most options available to us. The other one is latency. I'll try and keep it at the lowest I can for whatever device I'm using. Within the settings pane, things like track management, control inputs, clock sync, we've got lots of different things you can go through. So I'm going to go through them a little bit later in this tutorial. Okay, so I'm going to use the microphone for now so you can hear probably a little bit of reverb that's coming from Loopy HD directly. It's best to use Loopy with at least a pair of headphones plugged in, mainly because it'll use, if you don't do that, you'll use the microphone of the device and then use the speakers of the device and you're going to get real big feedback. Okay, so how do we record a loop? We start by tapping one of the circles. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So you can see there straight away that by tapping in it, that's the opening of the loop. You record your loop and then the second tap is closing the loop instantly and it will instantly start repeating. Now what you can do as well is you can see there that it goes grey and then you can see it goes a dark grey if I mute it. That's the muting button. So I can hit the play button. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. And I can tap four. the loop. One. Now it's still playing but it's muted. Now one thing I really like about Loopy, and this is pretty much the biggest thing about it, is that it'll figure out the BPM straight away, and then what you can do is you can do divisions of that. So in this big orange bar here is the play area, you can see the volume going in. But at the very, very bottom here, you've got a couple of options. This menu is where I'd normally stay for a performance. So you've got things like times, divide, plus, minus, you can see it just says one there. At the top you've got number one, so if we play this again, one, two, three, four, one, so you two, can see it's three, one bar, four, one, if I two, hit times, three, four, one, you can see it's going around twice as long as the first loop, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, so that's pre-set to actually record twice as long for the next loop, we'll get a new session, reset session, now just be aware that when you do that, if you click there and you click there and it says reset session, it will erase everything. So if you don't actually go to sessions and save it, it's gone. So we're just going to start with some hi-hats. <laughs> going to go to our times and divides. I'm going to go to times because I want a beat a little bit longer. So I'm going to do a kick and a snare drum just to kick in. So you can see there, I've been able to record one bar on loop number one, and then loop number two is two bars long. The great thing is that each one, I can actually change the division of the loop and it can be completely different. One thing I quite like about this system is when you tap it and you've already gone past 12 o'clock, it basically 
cues it up for recording. So you don't have to be bang on with the second one or the third one. Just the first one, you need to get the timing right, and then that's it, then you sort it for the rest of the performance. Now before we go on, what I want to show you is another part of this orange bar here. So I'm going to go through the different steps. So you have the part which we've gone over before, which is the divisions. The next part you'll only see if you plug in an audio interface. Right now I've plugged in an audio interface that has both a left and a right. So I'm plugged in with just the left. So I've picked the left uh, so it can bring that out as a mono. Also if you have the right you can print left and right. But be aware that if you do that it will go out as a left and a right. So if you've got track one as a microphone and track two as a guitar for example then you're going to have to go out as a dual mono as opposed to a stereo. The next one is quite useful. It gives you a metronome wanted to figure out the track. So there's a normal metronome there you can turn on and you can hear it in the headphones. And then the other one is a light. What it'll do is as it plays, it will flash the metronome as opposed to a click, which is really useful in a performance. I've used that before uh, if you're in quite a dark environment and you want just obviously a visual representation of the beat. This last one is the actual tempo itself. So this is where it gets really clever. It can figure out the exact tempo. So we're on 109.1 beats per minute and I can change that to whatever I want. So I'm gonna bring it down to 109. I can also tell it to be 4-4 four, four, or 3-4 or other beat measurements. And at the very top there, I could tap the tempo. Now this has a little bit of time stretching going on. So if I go back and start playing this and start messing with that tempo, you'll hear it time stretch to the best of its ability. <laughs> So it's really, really useful. So what I'm gonna do is gonna throw some harmonies over the top. Now I've got a couple of different ways I could do this. When you use each loop, you could use each loop individually, or what you can do is you can do a two finger tap once you've recorded the first loop and overdub. Let me show you. Once you do a first overdub, it remains in overdub mode, so the microphone is open, the recording is open, and then all you need to do is tap it once to close that, and it will go back to this grey silver colour. Now, what if you've recorded something you don't want? What you can do is you can erase it straight away. Even while it's playing, you can get rid of a loop. So what you can do is, I'm going to play, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these harmonies, and what you do is you swipe down inside the loop, and it'll give you some more options. So when we swipe down, just a little flick, and what you can do is you can hit re-record, so I could re-record it again, and then it will re-record from the beginning and erase it. You can just clear it, or you can click cancel to get out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear them completely, and then I'm gonna do something different. And that's it, they're gone. <laughs> So the other option you can do is you can do re-record. What I want to do is I want to actually re-record these this fourth loop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flick down. I can flick down now and show you. And you can hit the orange re-record. What it'll do is it'll cue it up until it hit, gets ready for at 12 o'clock. And it'll just open the recording again and erase the original. I can still overdub on the top of that. Okay, so the next part of this is actually showing you the volume and a couple of extra features of each loop. So what you can do is if you hold your finger down on one of the loops, what you'll get is you'll get a couple of options. So you can click share, and you can actually just share that one loop out to somewhere else. 
The other thing you can do is you can import. So we could actually, if you've got loops from inside the app or somewhere else, you've got an actual sample that you really love, you could bring that in. Then you've got volume. It'll show it like a dial and we can just drag it up and down or side to side. And you can change the volume of each track. And then the last one, if you hold it down again, is pan. And right, they're always at the center, but you can actually pan them left and right. The next little section I want to show you is how you can merge loops together. You have to be pretty quick with this, but what you can do is you can swipe in between two loops and put them together. What you do is you use your finger to swipe from one to the other. So the sixth loop, I'm going to put on top of the fifth loop. And all you do is swipe one loop over to the other. It takes a bit of practice, but you can get it. You'll see the loops go orange, like have an orange circle, and then they all loop together. One thing to remind yourself of this is obviously it's merging the loops. So you're merging the volumes. So if you have adjusted the volume beforehand, that's fine. But once you've done that, if one loop is too louder than the other, then you're going to have to re-record it. So say this is our loop system that we've got now. So I'm using five loops here. So what we're going to do is we're going to save it. So we click the little triangle on the top. And what we can do is we can go into sessions. And then I can actually click Save Current Session. You give it a name, or you can just timestamp it, and it'll save it right there. The other option you can do is you can save a recording. But what you can do is you can hit Record, do your performance, hit Record again, that'll stop it, and that'll be saved in the Recording section right here. So the next one I want to show you is a couple of tips and tricks with Loopy HD. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear this session. I've already got it saved for later. So I'm just going to lay a couple of tracks down, and then I want to show you something which is really, really nice. What you can do is you can do a couple of things in the settings. And this can really help a performance. So we go into settings. We've got things like general. You've got a noise gate expander. And what you can do is if you turn that on, you can actually have a threshold. You can even hear it there. So we can turn the threshold on, which is quite useful. There's a simple mode. There's also a more advanced mode. So you can actually play with the attack if you really, really want to. Maybe you might not be using a microphone that's really closed off or it's a really loud environment. You want to cut things like that off. Really, really useful. The other one I want to go into is track management. Now, this is really, really clever. What you can do is you can really, really dial in how you want the performance to be. As I tap the first one, I have the loop closed off. But you can actually tap it. Then when you tap it, it goes straight into overdub mode. So we can do overdub after recording, which is the fourth option down. The one above that is fade in, fade out. So let me just show you how that works. I'm going to turn off the flash of the BPM for now, just so you can see it a little bit clearer. I'm going to fade it out. And the last one. So the other section I want to go over is control inputs. Now this is where Loopy HD takes it to another level. So most looping apps on the um, iOS devices, um, they don't have some great controls on hand, but what if I'm playing guitar, or I'm playing keyboards, or I'm doing something else and I still want to use this? This is where this steps up. On control inputs, you can actually have a Bluetooth connected device, like say, for example, the blue board, um, by IK Multimedia, which is a four-step Bluetooth board. Or what you can do is you can enable a network and do virtual MIDI. You can personalize what those buttons do. So the first button could be play or record. The next button could be the times and divide. Or it could be stop or it could be overdub. So you can really, really personalize it. So this is where Bluetooth key binding comes in. So you can add a binding. So you press a button on the Bluetooth device. You tell it what, what you want to be, and then it binds that together. It saves that on the uh, system preferences automatically. So you don't have to do that every time. And then once that's been set in stone, it's done. There's loads of other features on Loopy HD, and I'd love to hear your comments about it. If you use Loopy HD, or if you're using another looping app, either on iOS or Android, please give me some comments in the section below. I hope that overview of Loopy HD gives you some insight. If you like this video, please let me know by liking it, give it a thumbs up. And if you've liked some of my other videos, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps the channel grow. Thank you very much for watching.